Hey folks, today I want to talk to you about MacBook Pro computers. They just updated the 2016 edition with KB Lake chips. Let's review them compared to the early models, talk about what you should buy and if it's worth the upgrade. But let me give you my summary now. If you own the 2015 or earlier, then the 2017 is a good upgrade. If you own the late 2016, then most likely not. And if you're not tied to Mac, then you might want to skip them all together. latest MacBook Pros have unfortunately done away with MagSafe connectors for USB-C. You can overcome this by using Griffin's BreakSafe magnetic USB-C power cable. I use them, they're great. Check out the link in the description below. So this is a top spec 15 inch Pro with the latest generation KV Lake processor. This is a mid-2015 15-inch Retina. It's also top spec, 2.8 gigahertz Core i7, 16 gig of 1600 speed DDR RAM, and the Iris 1536 graphics card. In between these two, I actually also had the 2016 top spec Skylake machine just for a couple of weeks. I was actually able to return it the day before the developer conference get my money back and then order one a day later and I saved a hundred bucks in the process getting the KB Lake processor. So what should you be considering if you want maximum bang for your buck? <laughs> well, honestly, none of these. If you want maximum performance, you'd be much better off looking at like a Dell XPS, a Razer Blade Pro, an Alienware, an MSI GT, or one of the countless other beast PC laptops out there on the market, many of which now feature single or even double 1080 video cards. But if you're in the Apple world for whatever reason, like software for me, I use Final Cut Pro, and you don't wanna go the Hackintosh route, which is more difficult with laptops, then your best bet is a MacBook Pro for something beefy. And a note to the inevitable Apple haters. Yes, Apple computers cost more. And yes, most Apple users realize that. Putting monetary value on the software, the aesthetics, the portability, it doesn't necessarily mean that Apple users are clueless idiots. It just means some people have different priorities. It's amazing to me that some people act this way. I mean, if somebody wants to buy a big cheap old film camera or a tiny mirrorless medium format, it's their choice, it's their money, who cares, right? If someone wants to buy a Corvette or a Tesla or a motorbike or a great big truck, again, it's up to them, their preferences, their needs and budget let it go. Anyway, I actually looked seriously at the Razer Blade Pro and the MSI, but a specced out Razer actually costs a lot more than the specced out MacBook Pro. And despite being one of the slimmest in the class of the high performance notebooks, it's almost twice as heavy as the Mac, which matters when you travel as much as I do. And the MSI GT83 Titan is triple the weight. It is a monster machine, but still. So anyway, here's how I'm going to proceed. First, let me tell you what I love and hate about the latest the generation MacBook Pros, then we'll look at the performance improvements. First, I love the display. It's bright and contrasty, the color range is pretty good, for a laptop anyway, but you will want to calibrate it. Hate, I hate the touch bar. I really hate Siri and it keeps activating her. I generally prefer real keys. I can see the potential of this technology, but in the weeks that I've traveled with it, I didn't find it useful except for the fingerprint ID, which I love. It's a great inclusion. After using it for two weeks, then coming back to my 2015 edition, typing in the password every time was a real ball ache. Hate, well, dislike anyway. The giant trackpad. Now, I know loads of people like it, and whilst the palm rejection is pretty good and it mostly works, I just think it's too big for normal applications. I personally have the left and right clicks both enabled and going from typing to moving the cursor and then clicking becomes a pain when it's so much further to the edge to get to the click zone. P.S. I also prefer the 2015 style keyboard to this new butterfly one as well. Love the speakers. Easily the best laptop speakers I've ever heard, period. Fantastic. Hate the lack of ports. Come on Apple, what the f? f? Sure, USB-C and Thunderbolt 3 are the best options in the market, no question. And including a couple of them is a great idea, but only Apple would be so bold only to include them. 
It's like releasing a TV that only has one type of input when you know every other device has a different interface. It means you will need to carry around adapters and hubs. I actually have a video coming on that soon. Love, for what I do, video rendering and photo editing, the new additions are noticeably faster. Final Cut Pro 10 especially seems optimized for the system perfectly, and that alone makes the 2016 and 17 models worth the upgrade for me. Hate, the lack of an SD slot. This pisses me off even more than the USB-C, to be honest. It's not that I think SD is a particularly pro card for Mac, in fact, an XQD reader would be far more handy for me, but having the card reader built in is so helpful for people in creative industries. It means carrying around another adapter, and that's totally gonna ruin the line of a lot of hipsters' skinny jeans. Another hate, with the move to USB-C, we also lost the MagSafe connector, bonehead move from Apple. That connector saved my ass so many times I can't tell you. Check out the Griffin cable that I promoted at the top and you can get around that stupid change. Finally, let's end on some love, the new Skylake processors. Whilst they're not new to the market generally, they're a very welcome addition to MacBook Pro. You may have heard that these are more power efficient than the Skylakes. Well, that's true, but it mostly applies to decoding 4K video content rather than general usage. So if you stream loads of Netflix or YouTube or you're playing back your own content for review like I do, then you'll see a considerable bump in battery life over the Skylake chip and previous generations. But in general usage, it's a modest improvement. How about the hardware performance? For my first test, I did a simple Nova Benz test of the 2017 top spec, 2016 top spec, 2015 top spec, and for reference, my assistant's custom 2012 mid-range MacBook Pro that he's specced out a little bit. Overall, there's not a huge variation amongst them. The biggest difference was the SSD speed, and the five-year-old graphics card is right up there, surprisingly, on that kind of a test. And you'll note that on this test at least, the 2015 model actually outperformed the late 2016 model with a final score of 1265. But note, just like DxO for camera ratings, you should pay closest attention to the indices that are important for the work you do. The final tally may not really show what it's gonna do for you. So that kind of all-in-one test thing, it's useful for something, but how about a practical test? To try it, we did, we exported the same 18 minute 4K video file, which was pulling from a variety of different peripherals with loads of video and audio streams on the 2017, 15 and 12 models to test the export time. In this real world media intensive export test, the new GPU, RAM and processor really shined. My assistant's 2012 model took 18 minutes and 26 seconds. Not bad and only slightly longer than my top spec 2015 that took 18 minutes and six seconds. But the new 2017 top spec only took nine minutes and 37 seconds. A huge difference, almost twice as fast. Long story short, if you're cool with carrying around a card reader and a USB-C adapter for now, the 2017 model is a great machine, and once Thunderbolt 3 products are in the market, it's going to really shine even more. But if you have a 2016 edition, it's a fairly pointless upgrade. If you're coming from 2015 or earlier, really give it some thought as there are major design changes to consider beyond the simple internal component performance. Let me know what you're using and feel free to share your own test results in the comments below. Thanks folks, we'll have more Inspector Gadget videos coming soon.